Hi, I'm Eddie Guidry. Thanks for uh, joining me today and welcome to ECNM Ask. It's a new Q&A video series brought to you by ECNM Magazine and found on the members only section of our website. And it's where uh, readers can ask pressing technical questions and hopefully today I can add clarity to a couple of them. For those that don't know me, uh, I've been in the electrical industry in both construction and design engineering for more than 45 years. And for the past 25 years, I've been part of many national and international industry codes and standards committees, including uh, National Electric Code Panels 11 for seven cycles. And um, I've been on many uh, IEEE standard uh, uh, committees. Since 2002, I've also been a contributor for ECNM magazine addressing various industrial technical issues. So with that, uh, let's get to the first question. Uh, and it's going to be addressing actually a compilation of several received along the lines of do all electrical items need to be listed or NERDL listed or UL listed to be NEC or OSHA compliant? Well, the answer to that is probably going to come as a surprise to some as um, it is a resounding no. In fact, one of the biggest errors I've seen in the electrical industry, um, especially on the engineering side, is a specification with language written something to the effect of all electric equipment shall be UL listed. Well, first, neither the NEC nor OSHA has a blanket requirement for all 100% of uh, electrical equipment to be listed or NERDL listed, which is National Recognized Testing Laboratory, and certainly not UL listed, which is a specific uh, NERDL. UL is uh, only one of the 20 plus National Recognized Testing Laboratories that are found out there on the um, OSHA.gov website. And I encourage you to take a look at, at those. They, they do change from time to time. Um, UL, though, is in fact uh, undoubtedly the oldest and largest of the NERDLs. Um, when we see a requirement, though, like that in a specification or anywhere else for that matter, it's no doubt a misunderstanding by the author of that specification as to what is being, uh, to what being listed really means and what types of equipment actually require a NERDL listing. A uh, quick sidebar before we go any further, uh, when I'm referring to OSHA during these questions, I want to be talking about uh, the federal OSHA program that's uh, and not one developed at a state level, such as you will find in uh, Alaska or California. There are some deviations in those state mandated programs from the federal um, regulations like 29 CFR. Uh, part 1910 subpart S, which deals with electrical uh, installations. Most of the time, the also the, the state mandated OSHA programs are more stringent than, than those in the federal regulations. So back to the um, discussion, the, the answer here on this uh, question. Let's take an example of a, of a product such as a motor starter installed in an enclosure and it's assembled as part of an industrial control panel uh, that you will find uh, in the NEC covered in Article 409. The starter itself may be recognized or certified component, but uh, and that, that will possibly make it easier for a panel manufacturer to obtain a true NERDL listing when it's built as a complete industrial uh, control panel. If there's enough demand for that particular industrial control panel um, to be produced identically many, many times, it may make economic sense for that panel manufacturer to have his uh, panel investigated and tested to um, NERDL product standard. And then, um, then you could actually obtain if um, a certification to have it listed officially listed. That NRTL or NERDL listing actually could be a nice selling point uh, for their panels. Uh, but there are typically other avenues 
to obtaining the AHJ or the authority having jurisdictions approval other than being listed in a case like this. One common alternative, um, let, let's say you have a control panel out in the field and it's not listed, it's a custom uh, control panel, a one of a kind. And uh, you could hire a, a NERDL organization such as UL or ETL or any of them listed on the OSHA.gov website. You could hire one of their inspectors to come out and perform a field inspection of that equipment. If they find that it is safe and it's in accordance with uh, the applicable uh, NRTL NERDL product standard, it can be field certified by that organization and they can put uh, a label on that product to indicate such. But while that uh, the authority having jurisdiction may accept that and they may accept field certifications, it, it still does not make that product listed. So that's an important thing to understand. Hopefully you can see where uh, project specification or other document requiring all electrical equipment to be listed or NERDL listed or UL listed is it's um, not only unreasonable, but it's uh, most likely not achievable. That said, there are sections of the National Electric Code and OSHA that actually do require certain products to be listed by a qualified testing laboratory um, or NERDL. In the United States, uh, that's typically interpreted by the uh, authority having jurisdiction to be uh, NERDL listed when the NEC uses that language of qualified testing laboratory. Um, again, that's one of the 20 organizations out on the OSHA.gov website that I mentioned a couple times previously. Um, here in the United States, I know that anybody that's been in the electrical business uh, pretty much considers the National Electric Code to be the law of the land, uh, so to speak. And it is used globally, really, in uh, most countries around the world uh, in some form or fashion, other than uh, possibly China or Russia, that they have their own way of doing things there. But um, the NEC is not enforceable unless a jurisdiction has adopted it as law. And so um, to that point, uh, on the other hand, OSHA regulations are enforced uh, only in the United States and its territories and not outside the United States. So hopefully that helped um, clear up some of that uh, as far as the need to have NERDL listing. So that leads us right into the next question that, that's related. And that is in section 110.3 paren B, the National Electric Code says, uh, equipment that is listed, labeled, or both shall be installed and used in accordance with any instructions included in the listing or labeling. So does that mean that all equipment must be listed and or labeled? Again, uh, that answer is no. Uh, even though many engineers and electricians quote that section uh, verbatim, and uh, they may have overlooked the fact that 110.3 print A also provides other ways that a product or installation can satisfy uh, the necessary criteria required for safety and, and get approval from the authority have a jurisdiction without having an actual listing um, or some other sort of NERDL certification. But also 110.3B is actually stating that if that equipment is listed or labeled, then it has to be installed with any um, manufacturer instructions that are included with it. Not that all equipment must be listed or labeled. Um, so in an effort to keep these videos short and interesting, we're going to wrap this one up. Uh, we've received a couple more questions pertaining to this subject that are in the queue. So please join us again with more answers to your questions coming soon in the ECNM members only portal. 
Thanks again so much for your interest in this edition of ECNM Ask, produced by ECNM Magazine. And it's a part of the portfolio of Endeavor Business Media Publications. 